Good morning, Victory Outreach, and thank you for tuning in to our Sunday morning service. My name is Caitlin, and as always, it is a pleasure to be with you this morning. Before I get started, I want to thank all of you who have given tithes to our ministry. Thank you for staying faithful even through these troubling times. And if you have not already visited our website and want to learn how to tithe online, we do have a brief video explaining just how to do that. You'll also find out great information on how to join our virtual Bible study, where to go for our Wednesday night prayer, and more of our news. Just to make mention, you have been praying for it, we are reopening on Mother's Day. That will be next week, Sunday, May 9th. So we are so very happy to see you there. Also, we wanted to make mention that Victory Outreach International does wonderful things around the globe. And if you want to help on that mission, you can by visiting their website and becoming a United We Can partner today. Thank you. Hey, Victory Outreach Inglewood, we want to remind you to join us for our weekly Zoom Bible study. Currently, we are going through the Acts of the Apostles, which is also referred to as the Book of Acts. The Book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament and tells of the founding of the Christian Church and the spread of its message to the Roman Empire. For more information, scan the QR code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website so you can sign up for the Bible study. Once you fill out the form, one of our church staff members will send you the Zoom meeting ID and password so you can join us for the Bible study. You can also go to our website to sign up as well. And don't forget, we also have our weekly prayer meetings every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. You can get the Zoom meeting ID by clicking on the quick response code displayed on the screen or by visiting our website at voinglewood.org. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, that if we give generously and sacrificially, that God will open up the windows of heaven and bless us in unimaginable ways. It's the only time in Scripture where God actually tells people to test Him. Give and see if I don't bless you, God tells His people. Here's a principle from the Bible. Generous giving positions us to receive blessings that we don't even know are waiting for us. So let's trust God and give generously to support our ministry and position yourself to receive a blessing from God. We have made online giving easy. Just click on the quick response code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website to give your tithes or offerings to Victory Outreach Inglewood. You can also visit our website, voinglewood.org, to give online as well. And may God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 5.8 Stay alert. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But the Bible says to stand firm and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is undergoing the same kinds of suffering you are. Amen. So, amen. So the Bible is, is telling us to stay alert, you know, and to be strong in our faith. Amen. Because there's a lot of things, you know, the enemy is trying to do a lot of things, a lot of things taking place. But, but the Bible says just stay alert. And, 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 you know, to just, just focus yourself on Christ, amen, this morning, whatever's taking place, amen. And, and he's telling us to be strong, be strong in our faith, amen, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power this morning, amen. But with that, we're going to pray this morning, amen, believe God, amen, to, to move, amen, to meet the needs of his people, amen, and continue uh, his will, amen. No matter what the enemy is doing, amen, the gates of hell cannot prevail, amen, against the kingdom of God, amen. That's the kingdom we belong to this morning. Amen. So let's go before the Lord this morning. Father God, we thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. We thank you for your amazing grace. Your amazing grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we just enter your holy presence with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. Thanking you, my God, for salvation this morning. Thanking you, my God, for all the answered prayer. Thanking you, my God, Lord, for your faithfulness, my God. Lord, you're slow to anger, overabounding in love and grace and compassion, my Lord. And we love you this morning. We thank you this morning, Father. And we just come before your throne of grace, my God, seeking your favor, my God. Seeking strength, my God. Seeking, my God, 
insight, my God. Lord, we want to be alert. Lord, we want to be wise, my God, in these times, my God, that we're living in, Father God. So we come to your throne, my God, and we seek your favor, my God. We seek your wisdom, your strength, my God, that you will strengthen your church, Lord, that your church will stand strong, my God, in these times, Father God. Lord, we call upon you, my God. Fill us, my God. Fill us, Lord. Lord, that our cup was runneth over, my God, with grace, my God, with favor, my God, with mercy, my God, with strength, my God, this morning, Father God. And continue, my God, meeting the needs, my God, of your people, my God. You see our hearts this morning. You see our homes this morning, Lord. You see our needs this morning. And mighty God, pour out your grace, mighty God. Pour out your healing, my God, upon those that are sick in body, my God. Those that need your touch of healing this morning, Father God. Alex Ortega, my God. Carmen, my God. We call their names to you, Father God. Ask you to move, my God, on their behalf, Father God. Kenny, Lord, we continue praying for Kenny, my God, and Mabel, my God, Vanji, Father God, also uh, Jennifer and Chris, my God, that they would see your hand, my God, your healing hand, move, my God, within their lives, Father God. We want to continue also lifting up uh, Sister Susan Gianelli, Father God, Sister Susan Sandoval, my God, Lord, pour out your grace, your healing, comfort, and strength, my God, upon their lives, Lord, we continue praying for families, Lord, for revival, Lord, within our families, Father God, we lift up, my God, uh, Daniel, my God, for traveling mercies, my God, Joseph, Lord, for, for, for the joy of the Lord, my God, and for your favor, my God, for that workshop, my God, that he wants, my God, that he'll get that workshop that he wants. We pray for your favor upon him, Lord. Also, we continue praying for Mabel's family, her kids, Lord. We lift them up to you this morning, Father God. We pray for Ozzy, Lord, for salvation, uh, George, for salvation, Lord. We lift up our church to you, Father God. We just pray, my God, for your favor, Lord, your favor upon your people, Lord. Lord, you would just bring revival, Lord. We lift up our nation to you, Father God, that you will do a work within our nation, Father God, the health care workers, my God, those in positions of authority, making decisions, Father. We pray, my God, that your hand would move, my God. Also, we want to pray, continue praying for the, the grieving families, Father, suffering, lost, Lord. We continue praying for the Malgoza family, my God, uh, the Fernandez family, uh, the Mayfield family, Lord, Sister Eileen's family, my God, as well as others, my God, that are grieving, Father. We just pray strength, Lord. We just pray peace, Lord. Lord, just the, your presence, Lord, that you would bring comfort, my God, and you would meet needs, my God, and just bring people to surround, my God, with, with encouragement and, and comfort, Lord. And, Father, any other need that's out there this morning, mighty God, just meet the needs, Father, and just bless your people. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Victor Outreach, and welcome to our virtual worship service on this beautiful Sunday morning. I am excited to be here this morning, but I will be even more excited to be here next Sunday, May 9th. We'll be here right here in our beautiful sanctuary, worshiping the Lord together. I am looking forward to that. Amen. So I certainly hope to see you here. Pass the word. Let people know we will maintain Social distancing, wear our masks, but we will be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Staying safe, but worshiping together. We need that touch from the Lord. We need uh, to assemble ourselves together. So I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Well, this morning, I'm going to be reading from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 32. It says, Rise in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your God. I am the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you and we ask for your blessing upon the reading of this word. We ask that you would speak to our hearts, that you would guide us, my God, guide us, help us, my God, to understand how to live as the people of God in this fallen world. So speak, we pray. In Jesus' name, and God's people say, Amen. You know, we've been talking about the family. The family has been the center point of our conversation this year, and there is no shortage of topics to talk about the family. The family as a concept is so rich, so deep, so inexhaustible that you never run out of things to say. Somehow God chose this idea of family, what it was about the family that God saw as being so meaningful to us. I don't know, but he has placed us all in families. 
Families bring about healing. Family brings sense of belonging. In fact, the Trinity is like a family, God's divine family, and he has opened up his family to invite us in. Family is such a beautiful thing. In fact, the church is patterned after the family. And so this morning, we're going to continue on this topic of the family. And there's probably no better topic that we can talk about regarding the family than this, right? Uh, respect for our elders, to honor our fathers and mothers. Leviticus 19, verse 32 says, Rise in the presence of the aged. In other words, stand up and show respect for the elderly. And by so doing, you show reverence to God. And this is one of those laws that God gives with his, his name at the end. His signature is attached. At the very end of this verse, verse 32, it says, I am the Lord. You know, in the original Hebrew version, it will simply say Yahweh. Right. God's name is signed to this verse. He's saying, yeah, this is me. This is me. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is my idea. This is what I want you to do, to stand, to show reverence to those who are elderly among you. You know, not long ago, a group of older adults got together to talk about respect. And these were men and women from across various communities, Hispanic, black, white, Native American. And uh, they got together to talk about respect, right? And, and across the board, they all agreed that older adults from all of these various cultures, all of these various communities, they, the one thing that they all seem to struggle with is to gain respect from the younger generations, right? This is something they all saw as a problem in their own communities. What used to be automatic, what used to be a social norm is now totally lost, this idea of respect. We see it in the rise of elderly abuse. We see it in the rise of Asian hate crimes, which many of, of whom are elderly. Right? We see it in the, the comments even that young people make, young people themselves. And, and I have some comments here, and I, and I quote from them. They say, age does not warrant respect. They actually said that. Age does not warrant respect. As Gen Z and millennials, it's often thrown in our faces that we are self-entitled and lazy by our elders. They go on to say this, and I'm quoting, older people are allowed to get away with a lot of things because of their age. Now, that even sounds like a young person. Like he's able to get away with it. How, why is he able to get away? Right? Uh, you know, they said older people are, are allowed to get away with a lot of things because of their age, not just discounts and the best seats on the bus, but they're allowed to get away with disrespecting younger people and disregarding how we feel. Are you serious? Who said this? Are you serious? You know, as a nation, we were once taught that basic manners are to treat elders with dignity and respect. We were taught that, right? But obviously, those days are long gone. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul, he wrote, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is right to obey your parents. He goes on to say, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Right? Do you want to survive? Do you want to live longer than you are right now? To live long, to, you need to honor your father and your mother. Right? But sadly, rather than treating elders with respect, we tend to push them aside. Instead of treating them with the respect that they deserve, we, we forget about them, we ignore them. American pop culture teaches our children to disregard older people. We live in a culture that celebrates youthfulness over wisdom, the newest thing over the tried and the true. And we give people like Miley Cyrus or Lady Gaga pundit status as if they're experts in matters of life and truth. And again, I say, are you serious? Are you serious? 
So this is why I've chosen to read this passage today. Because it paints a picture of what godly respect looks like in the home. Godly respect begins in the home. You know, among many of the nations in the world at the time, when these words were written, nations such as Egypt, it was considered a capital crime if a young man refused to rise up in the presence of an elderly man to offer him the right of way on a narrow path. So if these nations place such a high premium on respect for the elderly, how much more would God require this, demand this of his own people? Right. God was establishing a pattern of behavior, a way of life that he wanted us to fulfill in response to the elderly among us. Right. Oh, respect is something you shouldn't have to think about, but you simply respond. It's natural, automatic, spontaneous. Right. Especially in the family. Children should obey their parents. Children should respect their parents. They shouldn't talk back, slam doors, walk away. Right. But to honor them, to respect them. Now, we all know that the Bible is full of examples of disrespect. We see it in Adam and Eve when God gave them a command and they totally disrespected the command of God. We see it in Pharaoh who, who showed disrespect to God's command when God wanted his people to be set free. And he's actually literally said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? and let the children of Israel go. Who is the Lord that I should obey him? Right? Can you imagine? The, and it wasn't long after he said that, that he stood in the presence of the Lord before the judgment seat of God. Say it now, Pharaoh. Who is the Lord that I should obey him? Right? Miriam and Aaron disrespected Moses. Absalom disrespected his father David. Belshazzar disrespected the sacred vessels of the temple, having a party. Can you imagine that? Partying with the vessels of, of God, the house of God, right? Jonah disrespected the command of God. And today, examples of disrespect are seen everywhere. We see it on TV, in movies, in music, even in cartoons, right? We see it in the news, politics, in the classroom, at work. Disrespect is so pervasive in the days that we're living in that the word dis, the slang word dis, to dis somebody, right? The slang word has been recorded in dictionaries, right? That's how pervasive disrespect is these days. We live in a time where children talk back. Children cuss out their teachers. They've even been empowered to make decisions for their own lives when they're simply too young and inexperienced to make wise, non-impulsive decisions on their own. They're just simply too young, but they've been given all kinds of autonomy, all kinds of freedom to do as they please. And once they go wild and crazy, it's hard to corral them back in. And so the result is disrespect. What do we do? We teach them respect. We teach respect. We have, to, we have to gain the spirit that God wanted to establish among his people. The Bible says when your elders enter a room, stand in respect. We stop what we're doing. We acknowledge them. It's an expression of admiration, right? The reason is that at least in one way, they resemble God. They resemble God in the simple fact that they've lived longer than you. And that's enough. They've lived longer than we've lived. And so God has blessed them with many years. So thank God that they're still alive. Thank God that he's blessed them with long life. Thank God that he is moving in their lives. He's kept them alive. There's breath in their lungs, that their kidneys are functioning. Their heart is still beating. Amen. Thank God for what he's done. God is saying, hey, when you do that, you reverence me. You honor me when you honor the aged among you. And not all elderly people have done the best they could with the years that they've been given. But the fact that God has given them more time than he's given you or me, that's enough to reverence God. Stand up as if it's a reminder that God is near us. Stand up, you know, to show that God has blessed someone with many years. Praise the Lord. Stand up. Hopefully he's given them wisdom as well. Stand up in honoring God. He's able to sustain life, to prolong the years. And it's prolonged years 
which is the promise to those who have honored their parents. If you want to live long, if you want to live long in this land that he has given you, if you want to be, uh, take in all that God has for you, honor those who are elders among you. But it's unfortunate that we live in a time where respect like this is hard to find. It's been lost. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23, tells a story of a bunch of kids who made fun of the prophet Elisha, 42 of them that lived in a town called Bethel. They shouted, go on up, bald head, go on up, bald head. And I don't know, man, I kind of take offense at that, right? But, but as Elisha, you know, he turned and immediately called down a curse upon them, right? Right away, man, they saying these things that they're saying, he called down a curse upon them. I probably would have just said, you know, your mama and just kept going. But he called down a curse. But it wasn't actually Elisha who brought punishment on these 42 kids. It was God. In the eyes of God, this was an act of blasphemy. They were blaspheming God. These youth were mocking Elisha to ascend into heaven. Go on up into heaven, just as Elijah had done before him. You remember the story that Elijah was taken off into heaven and Elisha, if he was able to see that happen, that he would receive a double portion, right? To them, it was a joke. They didn't even believe that Elijah had gone into heaven. They obviously didn't believe that he had gone. So they mocked Elisha to disappear as well. Show us that you're going to disappear. Go on up, disappear, go on up. Bald head, you bald headed prophet, right? Making fun of him. And some scholars believe that the reference to bald head was actually an insult of an empty head. But either way, it was a sin of disrespect towards old age, combined with a disrespect for the role of the prophet as a man of God. You know, it was Leo Tolstoy who once said respect was invented to conquer the empty place where love should be. When you respect someone, you treat them well. You acknowledge that they exist, that they matter. When you, when you respect someone, it's as if they, they matter, that they count, that the fact that they belong. Respect should be the first thing we give to those we meet, to respect them even before you speak to them, right? Because you have to respect them to acknowledge them in the first place. It's the only thing that we can give to strangers as well as to our families with large quantities to give them respect, to never run out of giving respect. Respect means more than just being polite. It's easy to be polite sometimes. Respect is more than that. It means giving worth to someone, to give them worth. And there's no better place than the elderly. So can I suggest a couple of things to you this morning? regarding this idea of showing respect to the elderly, to the aged among us. Just two things this morning, just two. Number one, acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. The first and most obvious sign of respect is to acknowledge someone, to simply acknowledge that they're there. That might mean to speak to them, right? You know, that's the whole essence of this command. When it says to stand in the presence of the elder, it's like if they're passing an, an elderly person, to stand and just to acknowledge that they're there, that they exist, that this is a sign of respect, to acknowledge them. That's the essence of this command. Not that you necessarily have to get up every time you see an elderly person. You know, Sister Linda walks by, you have to get up all the time. No, that's not necessarily the point but that you never stop honoring those who are older than you. To acknowledge them is the first sign of respect. Speak, say hello, right? Teach your kids to say hello, to be respectful, to say sir or ma'am, right? Well, that's lost. We've lost that in these days. To acknowledge their existence. And in doing so, when we do this, we reverence God. We reverence God when we do this. Amen. So acknowledge them. That's number one. Number two, right? Just, just a two, two things. One is to acknowledge them. Number two, value them, to value them. 
You know, a child may love his father because he's his father. But that same child may not respect his father because of his drunkenness. But I believe that respect can develop if you value him. Even in a situation like that, that respect can develop when we value the person in question. Learn to see that person's worth. Not, not as a man who has become his best self, because he certainly is not his best self if he is drunk. That's not his best self. But learn to see him as a broken man in need of all the grace that Christ has made available to him. And Christ has made plenty of grace available to that man and to every man and to every woman. Right? It was worth it for Jesus to die for that person. Right? Perhaps not in the eyes of the child, perhaps not in the child's perspective, but certainly from Christ's perspective. It was worth it to him. So we can value him on the basis of what God can make of his life. The simple fact that God can do something incredible in his life, that we value him to see the, like a, a blank slate, the, a masterpiece in the making. God can do incredible things in the life of this person. And when we value people this way, we show respect. We show reverence. Valuing a person is that second step. Valuing a person is that necessary step in building respect. Just those two things, to acknowledge them and to value them. And can I say just one other thing? Because there are times when, when people find it difficult to, to show respect, perhaps because of of a history of, of struggles with those, that, whether it be the elderly or, or parents or whatever it may be. Learn to forgive. Learn to forgive. Forgive the past. Set it aside. Just undo it. Those thoughts that become a wall, that become a stronghold, those difficult things. Learn to forgive. Now, you don't, it, it doesn't mean that you have to be the best of friends with whoever it may be. But, but if it's someone that uh, maybe in a, you had a history of difficulty, learn to forgive so that the burden is not on you. So that you can release yourself from that burden that you're living under. And you can reverence God in the meantime. Amen? Just those couple of things to acknowledge and to value. Right? That's all it takes. And we can do this. We can do this, church. We can teach our children to do this. A man or a woman without respect finds it hard to exist. But this is why Victory Outreach exists. Hello, somebody. To restore respect, to restore dignity, to remove the stigma from treasures out of darkness. This is why we exist, to recover the honor of those who have been forgotten by society. We exist to restore the respect of those who have been disrespected their whole lives, those who have lost respect, those who have lost, who have never gained respect. We are here because we have in ample supply respect to give out, right? It's something you have to give. It's not something somebody necessarily has to earn. God isn't saying that the elderly among us have earned anything. He says simply show respect and I'll have something for you in return. It's something we can give away. You have it to give. You know, selfish people, self-centered people will say, hey, respect me first. Respect me first, and then I'll respect you. They make it a transaction. They make it something other than what Christ says that respect ought to be. Right? If you do it to me first, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. If you respect me first, I'll respect you. Right? That's not Christ's way. Can you imagine if Jesus says, hey, die on the cross first, then I'll do it for you. Right? It's, it, it doesn't work that way. Right? Jesus expended himself. He gave of himself because he had plenty to give. And respect is something you have to give. God is saying, give respect. Give it to the elderly among you. And in so doing, you reverence God. Amen. Can I pray for us this morning? Let's pray. We're going to pray for God's blessing as we learn 
to give honor where honor is due to those that have lived longer, those who represent wisdom among us, whether wisdom is there or not. This is what God has asked of us. Amen. Father God, I pray for every parent, every grandparent, every great grandparent, Father God, that lack of respect is nothing that they ever have to experience, but that we love them, that we show respect, proper respect for those who are older in our midst, that we honor you, dear God, in upholding this command to show respect and honor to those who are older among us. I pray, Father God, that we be a church that shows respect. I pray your blessing. Father, we thank you this morning for all that you are doing, all that you continue to do. Bless your people, Father, I pray. Bless our families, I pray. Our children, Lord God, help them to grow up with proper understanding about their role in showing respect to those who are older. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I certainly hope that the Lord has spoken to you. And I look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday morning. Let somebody know we're going to be right here in our sanctuary. Now stay tuned for our communion. Amen. Get your bread and your juice ready because we're going to go before the Lord. Hi, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. And we're going to go ahead and take communion this morning. So if you have your bread and you have your juice, we're going to go ahead and get started. But I just want to read from Scripture. It tells us, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, right now we gather together in remembrance of all that your Son has done for us. And so we give you thanks for this bread that symbolizes the body of your Son, Jesus, which was broken for us. Go ahead and take the bread. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and take the cup. We thank you, Father, for this symbol of unity, this symbol of of atonement, the symbol of the uniting of your church together. And we pray your blessing, Father, on each of us. Watch over us, my God, as we unite ourselves with you for your cause, for your purpose, for your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Next Sunday. Look forward to it. God bless you.